most mysterious, unexplainable, and inexplicable events often take place in the most ordinary places. Places like the small, quiet college town of Chestnut Hill. Usually, these seemingly unexplainable occurrences are eventually explained. But every so often, they remain mysteriously inexplicable. Sometimes it is best to accept the unexplainable rather than search in vain for inexplicable explanations. For some things are simply unexplainable. The movie you are about to see is one of them. Garbanzo. No, sorry, not old Joe. I know every one of your hiding places. Ah! Give yourself away, old girl. Old Joe may not be able to see worth a hoot in hell. I can hear an ass on the sponge. Yes, sir. -y. Ah, gotcha.
Excuse me, Chief. Can I talk to you? Richard, how many times have I asked you not to call me Chief? Sorry, Mr. Bernstein. Ben. My name is Ben. Now, you've been here for almost a year, for Christ's sake. Everybody calls me Ben. Hey, Scott. Hey, Cliff, how you doing? Hey, Vinny. Great story. Yeah. <laughs> Scoop, that's the best thing you've ever done. You're going to win another Pulitzer. Oh, that's sweet, Maggie. Am I going to see you tonight? Call me later. It's not the big story in a scoop that keep a big city newspaper alive day in and day out. It's the little things, Richard. What you write, that's what's important. That's what makes this paper click. The obituary? It's just a, a challenge. Hey, Chief. Chief. Scoop. Baby, what a great story. Yeah. Hey, sit down. I'll be with you in a minute. Hi, Scoop. Hey, Dicky boy, how you doing? We were just talking about the possibility of a more important assignment for Richard. Yeah? <laughs> well, hey, that, uh, that sounds great. It's just that I know I could get the big story if I just had the right assignment. Maybe something political. Something with a little meat to it. I'm sure you could, Richard. I know I don't have any real training as a reporter. And of course, the only reason I got this job in the first place is Richard, because... Richard, it's nobody's business how you got the job. I just don't well, think... Wait a second, Chief. You, you know, Dick's got a point here. Well, he never does get a chance. He always gets the garbage. <laughs> you know, while guys like me get to pick the plums. Chief, what do you say we uh, give the guy a shot? What did you have in mind, Scoop? Here, Dick. You can, uh, you can have my next assignment. No, Scoop, come on, I can't, I can't it's a big take murder it. case up in Chestnut Hill. Murder case? Well, oh, take. Three murders within a week. Each body found with two mysterious puncture marks on it. Now, this is not just another small town murder, Dick. Well, it's a, it's a conspiracy. Right, Chief? I'm beginning to think so. <laughs> this could be the hottest story in the country, and no other major paper's picked up on it yet. It's all yours, Dick. And you'd let me have your story? Take it before I change my mind. <laughs> Chief? Well, I suppose we could get Hoffman to do the obituaries for a week or two. Okay, kid. Run with it. <laughs> that story's three weeks old. <laughs> Want me to do it again? Sure. So what are you doing anyway? I'm just recording lots of different samples. This for a project I'm working on at school. Here, I guess this one's yours. Oh no. Thanks anyways. I'm not allowed to eat chocolate. See, you're still alive. What's this project you're working on all about, anyway? Have you ever heard of the ultrasonic energy augmenter? Ultrasonic energy augmenter? No, I don't believe I have. If it works, it can be the answer to our whole energy problem. Thanks for your help, Miss Brad. I will be sure and take all this into consideration. Look, I realize how crazy it all sounds, Sheriff, but I really think we should... Professor! What is going on? It's my fault. I told him you wouldn't mind if you had just one little bite. I thought... Well, that... I'll tell you what I think. I think you had no business telling him that. What's wrong with a little chocolate? What's wrong with a little chocolate? A, it's bad for your teeth. B, it's bad for your skin. C, it's bad for your whole body, and I could go down the whole alphabet if I had the time. Now, it's fine with me if you want to poison your own children. But in the future, will you do me a favor? Stay away from mine. What are you doing?
was that? Some crazy lady from the college. She thinks it's some kind of a snake that's doing the murder. The guy from the newspaper? Yes, Richard Clark. Sam Ketchum. Come on in. Did you say snake? I told you she's crazy. Have you seen these pictures? Them two marks were found on each one of the bodies. Probably an ice pick or some other kind of sharp instrument. Now, that lady, Miss Bennett, she teaches biology or something over at the university. She come in here and said to me that them holes was probably made by some kind of a giant snake. <laughs> well, I've dealt with some kooks in my time, but that takes the cake. Uh, heaven's sake, them two holes is over an inch wide apiece. Uh, does that sound like any snake you ever seen? No. Wasn't no snake that dragged Mary Lou Caldwell 15 feet across the room. Wasn't no snake that picked up Joe Shempter's dog and hung it on the closet door. No, sir, Mr. Clark. We ain't talking about no snake here. What we got here is a homicidal maniac. He's bound to screw up sooner or later, and when he does, we'll be there. Out of waiting him out. This is where Mary Lou got it. I'll show you where we found it. Does there seem to be any theory or explanation about the closet? Nope, but we're working on it. Just a matter of time till we figure it out. I got my boys working double shift now. Just a matter of who and how. We'll get that sucker. Hi, hon. Roy, what are you doing home so early? I finished work at the office, so I took off. Great. I'll be out in a few minutes. I'm going to run down the bread so you need anything? We can use a quart of milk. Okay. I'll be back in about 15 minutes. Find my keys to the car. Can I borrow yours? Sure, they're in my red purse. Where is it? A top shelf in the closet. Thanks, son.
hear that? Sounds like it came from outside. Let's go. It killed my husband! It's in the closet! All right, all right, all right. What, what's going on? He was big and brown and had a lot Pull yourself down. together, lady. Anybody know what she's talking about? She ran out of this building stream and somebody killed my husband. Shower! She said a monster did it. Well, somebody oh. take her inside and throw a glass of water in her face. Come on. Better stay back, son. Ooh, wee. What a mess. Great. I don't know about no monster or nothing, but that lady's right about one thing. This guy's dead as a doornail. Poison all my students now. Oh, look, no chocolate. Just because you're unarmed doesn't mean you're not dangerous. Look, I'm sorry about this afternoon, but I've got to talk to you. It's about the murders. Who are you? I'm from the San Francisco Daily Globe. Richard Clark. Sheriff Ketchum told me about a theory that you have about a snake that's been committed. That's the most idiotic thing I've ever heard. Do I look like a complete imbecile? If the sheriff had bothered to listen, he would know that I was only trying to tell him that the marks found on the bodies had the same characteristics as a snake bite. I don't know what it means. I'm not a detective. But I certainly wasn't suggesting that some wild snake has been running around murdering people. There was another murder today. Oh, no. I saw the body. It had the same two marks, and I also found something. Diane, Diane, have you seen my maxillary tunnels? I had it two minutes ago, and I can't even remember where I was. Mr. Murchis. Uh, no, Dr. Pennyworth, this is Mr. Clark. Oh, well, it doesn't matter. Uh, you're coming to dinner, Diane. Mr. Tonight? Clark has brought us something very interesting. I think you should take a look at this. Do you feel the heat? Yes. Yes. Hard, isn't it? It, it? it seems to be some sort of animal claw. I've never seen anything like it before. Diane, Diane, I, I'd like to run some tests on this at once. Oh, if that's all right with you. Sure. Uh, when do you think you'd have the results? Well, I, I might know something this evening. But since you're coming to Diane's house for dinner... Well, oh, I'm sure Mr. Clark has probably made plans already. No, actually, I don't have any plans. upstairs now, Mother? Not now, Professor. Why not? A, we have other guests. B, we haven't had dessert. And C, I'm sure Mr. Clark would like some time to finish his eggplant. You're too kind. No, really. No, no, no. If you don't clean your plate, no cucumber pudding. Look, a cockroach. I'll get it. Wait, Professor. Stop and think for a moment. Remember. Even a cockroach is one of God's creatures. Oh, that's right. Why, there's so much you can learn from even the tiniest of insects. Now, if you capture that cockroach, why, you may end up with a scientific specimen that you can dissect and, and study. But if you merely squash it on the table, well, then all you've got in the end is garbage. You're missing the point, Philip. No matter whether you squash it, dissect it, burn it, or eat it, it's still the same thing. You're violating God's sixth commandment. Martin, when I was a young boy, I found a little frog. I decided I would study it. So I cut it open and looked inside. Oh, there were bowels, intestines, all the usual things. But when I happened to 
squeezed one mucous membrane, a slimy green substance squirted out right into my face. It was not unlike the color of a rancid avocado. I took one drop of this substance and studied it under a microscope. And from my study of that one drop, there emerged my later discovery of a cure for cholera, which has saved millions and millions of lives. That's precisely the point, Philip. If we continue to slaughter defenseless creatures, we are no better than the animals themselves. You would have us stay then in the Middle Ages. And if I were Diane? to leave... Diane, are you all right? Oh, uh, um, uh, yeah, I was just thinking. Um, Professor, why don't you take Mr. Clark upstairs right now, okay? Would you like to see it now? Boy, that would be great. I hate cucumber pudding. So do I. Well, this is it. So this is the famous ultrasonic energy augmenter, huh? The augmenter will bounce the sounds back a thousand times their normal energy. Now all we have to do is... some giant brown snake, and I'm fixing to go in and skin it. Ben, Barney, get the door. She could be right, Sheriff. Sheriff, 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 Okay, we know you're in there, so come on out. You've got 30 seconds to get out here with your hands up. Now you got 15 seconds. Come out with your hands up. If you don't come out here, we're gonna come in and get you. Trick-or-treat's over. Now you stop right there and take that costume off. It's incredible. Okay, buddy, that's far enough. You take one more step and I'm gonna shoot. Uh, 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 
Something no human being has ever set eyes on before. <laughs> you wanted a story, Mr. Clark. Oh, you may just have the biggest story the world has ever known. I only pray there's someone left. Read all about it, hey, get your morning paper here. Monster loose in Chestnut Hills. President declares national emergency. All troops, armored divisions, and reserve units rolled into Chestnut Hills. This small town, 50 miles north of San Francisco, has become the focus of the entire world. General Franklin D. Turnbull, head of Army operations, issued a statement saying that the monster is... Somewhere in this three-block area. We've got it completely evacuated, roped off, patrolled, guarded, and surrounded by tanks. Well, if the SOB's in there, there's no way in hell he's going to get out. General Turnbull, will you be going in after the monster, or will you wait for it to come out? We think that there's a pattern to its movements. If we can figure out precisely what they are and where the thing is, we're going to go in and nail that sucker. Uh, excuse me, General. What are you going to do with it when you find it, General? Pick my teeth with it. Any more right questions? Uh, yes, General Turnbull, do you have any idea what this thing really is or where it came from? Personally, I don't give a damn. This is Dr. Pennyfeather's problem. I, I believe that it's a, a creature from another world, a, another time, possibly another planet, but the implications are staggering. That's why I hope to study it so that we can answer all of your questions. Dr. Pennyworth, do you have any theory as to why the monster is using closets to hide in? None. None whatsoever. That's one of the delightful mysteries of this whole phenomenon. General Turnbull, does this mean you're going to try to capture the monster alive rather than destroying it? Sir, I was sent here to save lives, not to conduct scientific hodgepodge. The minute we spot this bastard, we're going to send him to Kingdom Punk. Oh, but, but General, General, there, there are no ground rules. I mean, sometimes you can save more lives by not pulling the trigger. Why, when I was a young boy, I, I once found a frog. Now, I could easily have taken that. Excuse me, gentlemen, but we are wasting time here. We have a lot to do. We are wasting time talking. If everyone will just do exactly what they're told, stay out of this restricted area and padlock your closets, the United States Army will take care of the rest. Thank you. And good day. Hey, Dickie boy. What are you still doing here? What do you mean? Well, didn't the chief get in touch with you? No. Oh, damn, I guess he forgot to call. <laughs> he did? You're in luck. You got a promotion. A promotion? Yeah. You know the political assignment you wanted? Well, you got it. Yeah, the chief wants you back at the office right away. But I can't leave. I'm right here in the middle of probably the biggest <laughs> store I've ever seen. <laughs> it's all right. I'll cover for you. Look at this monster crap's gonna blow over in a day or two. The chief's got bigger things planned for you. Yeah, but still, I mean, look hey, you at this. don't have to thank me, pal. I know you'd do the very same thing for me. 
Listen, Dick, I gotta go. I'll see you back in the office in a couple of days, huh? Hey, Dick. Congratulations. A, we're just about to have some tea. B, Dr. Pennyworth doesn't want to see anyone right now. And C, we've already told Mr. Clark everything we know. Mr. Clark? <laughs> well, that's a hard one. Hey, listen, that idiot couldn't write his way out of a toilet seat. Yeah, anyway, he's not even on the story anymore. Well, what are you talking about? Listen, that guy's no reporter. You know how he got the job? His uncle owns the newspaper, that's how. <laughs> yeah. The only reason we sent him up here in the first place was to get him out of everybody's hair. The guy's a loser. I mean, he's the laughing stock of the whole paper. Thank you very much for all this valuable information, Mr. Johnson. But I think you'd better go now. Yeah, look, um, <clears throat> I just need a couple of minutes with the old boy to get a couple that of... That uh... old boy happens to have won two Nobel Prizes. And I really think you'd better go now. Thank you very much, Mr. Johnson. Look. I'm going to talk to him one way or the other, so you may as well let me talk to him right now. Nice meeting you, Mr. Johnson. Mr. Clark? Hi. Hi. I just stopped by to, to thank you for dinner and, and to say goodbye. Are those for me? Oh. Yeah, I, I picked them up. They look like they can use some water. And you look like you could use some iced tea. Come on in. It's hot today, isn't it? Sure is. Why don't you relax in the living room? I'll be right there. Immortality. God's creatures. And I'm not arguing with you. I'm merely trying to point out Mr. Clark. Dr. Pennyworth? Richard. Uh, sit down, sit down. Martin, I don't want to kill it. I simply want to communicate with it. Well, they're hardly giving it a chance. Hardly giving it a chance? My God, it's killed five people already. I mean, don't you think... Uh... Oh, that poor creature's more afraid than we are. Well, any wild animal will kill if a Child, make it understand that we mean it no harm. Why, why, we could unravel mysteries that have plagued mankind for billions and billions. Miss Bennett. Miss Bennett. Here, here. Are you all right, Diane? Uh, he, yes, I, I was just trying to... Stop! <laughs> Professor! Professor, stop that thing. What's the matter? That, that, that sound. That sound, what was it? Which one? You mean the monster? But Are... lay, play it back again. <laughs> play it again.
told you I'd talk to him one way or another. <laughs> All right, Mr. Johnson. What would you like to know? Well, first off, Dr. Pennyworth, um, <laughs> what's the angle on uh, trying to communicate with this thing? It's one of God's creatures, my son. A stranger in a strange land. And it really hasn't been given a fair chance. We're talking about a far advanced being from another world. Possibly as, as superior in, in relation to us as, as we are to the worms and lizards from which we evolved billions of years ago. Now, if only we can communicate with it, well, we should be able to... Put their hands up. You're all under arrest. Who the hell do you think you are, the goddamn junior G-man? Bust my ass trying to save some lives around here. And you people are out playing hide and seek with Godzilla. You know, General, there's more than one way to save lives. But when I was a young boy, I, I once found a frog. No, I could have taken that frog and... Rip frogs? What do I give a ding-dong about frogs? For Christ's sake! Get back in the ball game, Pennyfinger. Do you have any idea what in hell is going on here? We are no longer in the city, ladies, gentlemen. Our reports are widespread panic. Boston, New York, Chicago, St. Paul, Duluth. General, I think we've got it. There's a pattern, definitely. I knew it. The monster seems to move in half semicircles, alternating between 45 degrees south and 37 degrees northwest every nine and a half hours at a distance of three and three-fourths kilometers. What the hell does that mean? According to our calculations, excuse me, sir, the monster should show up here just about now. That's that goddamn grammar school. The, the professor. professor.
Now listen to me. Don't do anything until I give the orders. What? Well, what's happened? Goddamn thing's coming out. All right, man. Get ready. No, no, no. Wait, gentlemen. Wait. Please, just, just let me communicate with you before you do anything. All right, man. This is it. Let's show this bastard what we're made of. No, gentlemen. No, don't, don't, don't you understand? Don't you understand? We must find out. We must learn. We, we owe to the future, to, to our children and our children. Oh, get well. away from me, you old goat. All right, men. Stand by. At my command. Get back here. Get in, Pinker. You old fool, get back here. Understand me. I want to help you. I'm a scientist.
I'm here, Dr. Pennyworth. We... We did it. Yes, we did it, Dr. Pennyworth. We... We communicated. Yes. We really communicated. You really did it, Dr. Pennyworth. Congratulations, Dr. I knew, I, I knew we could do it. We communicated. Dr. Pennyworth, could you understand what it said? No. We must stop. We, we must, must. It, it can't be stopped. Only one way, only one thing can stop it. What? What can stop it, Dr. Pennyworth? We must destroy. Destroy what? Destroy all. We, we must destroy, we must destroy all. all. Frogs. Everywhere, millions and millions of frogs. It's so beautiful. Frogs everywhere. I, I, I think it's time to say a prayer. A prayer for the whole world. And bless the soul, O Heavenly Father, of he who died that others might live, he who valued life over death, yet also valued death over life. Life over death because he was a man who sincerely believed in his heart that it was better to be alive than dead. And death over life, 
because he knew in his innermost soul that it was better to die for life than to live for death. Hey, what are you guys doing here? Don't you know the whole town's evacuating? I hate to bother you at a time like this, Miss Finner, but uh, I got a couple of questions I'd like to ask you. Not now, Mr. Johnson, please. Uncle Martin? I don't think God would mind if we finished the services in San Francisco. Amen. Uh, Miss Finner, um, just before Dr. Pennyworth died, he, he said something about a way to stop the monster. Do you have any idea what he was talking about? Scoop, this, this really... Hey, don't worry about it, Dick. It's okay. Um, yeah, he said, we must destroy all. All something, but he never finished. Do you have any idea what he meant? Destroy all what? I wish I knew. Well, you must. I mean, you're the only she one who does. She doesn't know. Hey, <laughs> hey don't get touchy, Dickie boy. Look, I wasn't suggesting that she did know. Or that maybe she was saving that information for somebody else so that, that somebody else could get himself an exclusive story. <laughs> hey, listen, hon, I just need a And few don't minutes. call her hon. Hey, listen, Clark. If you and this bitch think you're going to... Is you all right, Uncle Martin? I'm sure he will be, my son. God moves in mysterious ways. I'd like to think that in his infinite wisdom, God dimmed Mr. Johnson's light so that in the darkness, the Lord could get his attention and he'd come back a better and a wiser human being. Amen. What Mr. Clark knocked him out with one punch? It was not Mr. Clark, my son. It was the punch of God. You see, Mr. Clark, you knocked him out with one punch. I did? Boy, you were right. Punch bars really do give you lots of energy. Energy. That's what Dr. Pennyworth was talking about. The only way to stop the monster. We must destroy all its energy. Area residents are advised to undertake the following evacuation procedures. Do not load yourself down with unnecessary items. Water, lighting, and food, and other essential supplies will be provided for you at the emergency relocation facilities and shelters which have been set up in San Francisco. Secure your home and unlock your closets prior to General departure. Bus. See what arrangements you can make while I talk to the general. General, got to talk to you. I think I know how to stop the monster. Uh huh. Electricity. Oh yeah. Plug it into a socket. Turns itself into a crystal. No, tree. we did Great some tests. Doctor Pennyworth and I in one of the monster's claws. Doctor Pennyworth. And found that the cell structure Hello, consisted of electrons. Playing with a broken that helmet. That speeds millions and millions of times faster than normal. I don't give a monkey's part how fast. General, just listen. No, you listen. No way in hell we can stop this. Just listen. The electrons move so fast they create a heat. We tried everything already. Ship your bombs. We have two seats left. They're ready to go. Okay. Go on the bus. That's not negotiable. I'll meet you in San Francisco tomorrow. See you at the church. Okay, thanks. I love you. Be good. Bye. Just in case you need some energy. You better hurry. See you in San Francisco, son. Will you listen to me? I'm telling you we can destroy it with electricity. I'm telling you I don't care how long an extension cord you got. There ain't no way. But I'm trying to tell you we can destroy its energy if we can just pump enough voltage into it. The it's United States Army can't stop this thing. How the hell are you going to? Murphy, get the hell out of there. Jesus Christ, lady, taste the music. It's the goddamn end of the world. You know what that means? Every man for himself. I don't know about you, but I'm going to get the hell out of here. I'm staying. Food and other essential supplies will be provided for you at the emergency relocation facilities. You better get going. I'm staying too. You don't understand. Yes, I do. You're going to try to kill the monster. It's going to be dangerous, and I'm going to help you. Richard. Really, I appreciate... You're not going to talk me out of it. Why are you doing this? Look at it this way. A, if it doesn't work, what's the difference? It's the end of the world anyway. B, if we do succeed, well, then I end up with the greatest scoop of all time. And C? I'll tell you about that some other time. Come on, we'd better hide.
I don't know what's going to happen or how much time we've got. But I never got a chance to say thank you. <laughs> Thanks for saving the professor and oh, for everything. Do me a favor. Sure. Tell me what C was. C was that I wanted to be with you. You know, the first time I knew I liked you, it wasn't when you stood up for me against school. Huh? It was before that. It was even before you saved the professor. It was the day. The day you came to say goodbye. <laughs> I still picture you standing there with those flowers in your hand. You look so
Stop. The end, Professor. Mother, what if Dr. Pennyworth didn't mean that we should destroy all his energy? What if he was trying to tell us that the only way to stop the monster is to destroy all of the closet? mass hysteria has spread throughout the world today as the unstoppable closet creature continues its relentless march southward. Virtually all of Northern California, from Crescent City to San Francisco, has been evacuated. At the same time, emergency procedures are underway throughout the western half of the United States. Religious leaders and scientists alike are predicting the worst, the possible end of civilization as we know it. Countless millions everywhere are fleeing from the death and destruction that lie ahead. But where do we run? Where do we hide? I'm afraid we may be witness to a biblical prophecy come true. And the beasts shall inherit the earth. We now switch you to an emergency broadcast from Professor Diane Bennett of the University of Chestnut Hills. Ladies and gentlemen, I come to you with the last hope. The last hope for humanity. The last hope for mankind. We've tried every reasonable and rational approach, but neither man nor machine has been able to stop this thing. I ask you to bear with me for a moment and throw reason and rationale out the door. We have no idea what this creature is, or where it came from, or how it got here. All we do know is that it moves from closet to closet, and that these closets serve some sort of purpose for this beast, possibly as places for shelter or security, for rejuvenating itself. Who knows? All we know is that our only hope of destroying this monster to destroy its places of refuge, to destroy all closets. Go out and destroy every closet you can find, every closet in the world, whether you have to chop them down, burn them down, or blow them up. It's our last hope. I repeat, we must act immediately. Destroy all closets. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you. 
It there was a closet. It couldn't fit both of us in. It could have saved itself. What an angle. A story destroyed by its own closet. Oh, no. It wasn't the closet. It boys, was beauty. Boys, killed the boys, that's enough already. You'll be able to read all about it in Mr. Clark's exclusive articles starting Monday in the Globe. Mr. Bernstein. I said, call me Chief. As the end came swiftly, and the world was saved, it was improbable, unexplainable, a complete mystery. But this isn't a time for worrying about explanations. It's a time for joy and celebration. A time to hold your loved ones and give thanks. Go home, my friends. Go back and rebuild your closet. Hi, hon. 
Ah! <laughs> 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 